I'm a member of um, G and J Secretarial Foundation. Um, we start with them. So this um, training is about trauma healing. Yeah, for those that have been through trauma, traumatized people. But this very section particularly is um, for um, sickle cell patients and um, caregivers. So, but not just basically for them. We have some other people joining in who have experienced um, maybe a, an illness that is similar to that or or maybe completely different, but they've been traumatized in um, different ways. It may not be sickness-wise, alone. So we also have um, some um, people from rehabilitation homes around here. Um, I'm one of the facilitators of this very program. I wish I would have stayed. I wish I would have, you know. So all these things, if we still feel guilty that you were supposed to have done something, and maybe you would have averted the loss or something. It shows that you are manifesting the behavior you want. Yeah. And what's another? Okay, the next one. Why did this happen to me? And when you are asking yourself, remember we just said it, right? Why me with sickle cell? Why not any other person? Why not my siblings? Some came out and they don't have. But me? Is it? Is it that God? Why me? What? Why? Why me? Me? Even though my parents have made a mistake, yes. But why is it that it's me that came out in Sikusa and not any other person? You know, this could actually be a question, right? You still lament and you keep asking this question every time in your heart. Then you are in also struggling with your You all keep on blaming your, you blame your parents since for years. Anytime you, you're in crisis, your heart always goes that they are responsible. Right? Oh, they know they know that that plateau is between. I hate it like what? If it's Jaguano, I don't want to even hear it. If it's this hospital, very wicked. Why? You're always blaming. You know, you're transferring your pain. You're blaming others for your misfortune. And if you keep blaming, blaming, you know that you're what? And the next one, they say you were what? They take revenge, which will result to more conflict and more pain. You may say me. For this thing my parents have done to me, I will participate in any domestic chore again. I will be very stubborn. If they send me, I will not go. Right? You're trying to pay back what they did to you, right? And if they say, respect your face, say respect what? Be careful. You, were you careful? In your heart, even if you don't say it out, you say, you, you're talking about being careful, 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 as if you were careful. You know, what are you doing? You're transferring. And then you are trying to take vengeance. But in the vengeance, it will result to what? Okay. Because sometimes you even outrightly tell your parents that you were very careless people. So when you say that, what will happen? <laughs> you said I'm careless. And then you connect it. Now from your feelings, your inner pain in the heart, now it has inflicted pain on your body. Right? So it only resulted to more crisis. But then, you are just manifesting. These are normal reactions. Normally when somebody is grieving, and it's in this village, these behaviors manifest. It's not trans, it's normal reaction. It's normal. Uh, my name is Adeyinka Adetiji. I'm um, a facilitator here at GNJ Killer Secrecy Foundation. And this is a trauma healing workshop organized for uh, affiliate warriors and their caregivers and other people going through trauma. Yeah, we chose warriors because m most of them suffer in silence and the stigmatization they go through thinking nobody understands what I'm going to do. Let me just bottle up my feelings. I don't need to talk about it. Nobody will understand me. So we chose them and then they are caregivers. Based on the fact that they, they go through a lot taking care of the warriors and most times there's nobody for them to talk to. So we felt it would be nice for them to come to create an avenue where they can express themselves and relieve all the tension, the anger, the grief they've been carrying inside them. When you realize that now I I am a secret self survivor. Mm. And no amount of prayer will change it for now. We know miracle can happen. And some people still say, I still believe that. I've had people that, that, that got visual impairment and say, I still believe that I will see. I will see. Me, I know I will see. And then she, until she toured all the prayer centers in Nigeria, before she come 
to the acceptance of reality right now. I am a visually impaired person. So this is a village of no hope where you have noticed that I, my situation cannot be. The hand of the clock has already gone like this and it can't come back. So me, I am now a social person. This is my new identity. I now have sickle cell or oh, I have experienced social loss and I can never get it back. Now what will happen? How will I cope with social, without social person, right? When I want social thing, who will help me? Now, my vision, if you lost a father, like I did, then uh, to me, I saw my aspirations and dreams all gone dark. Because I said, I wanted to become this. How can I become? Ten children. Who will pay our school fees? So the anxiety for, let me finish school and go this and go, all those things in my heart were what? Went blank. So I saw myself now without school. I was just imagining life without school. My name is Suzanne. And I'm a participant and so far it's been very interesting and relieving. It's been wonderful to me. Well, like, um, like the workshop says, um, it's trauma healing to help um, relieve the pain or stress that I've been That's what I'm here. Because um, sickle cell comes with a lot of trauma in itself, the pain, the crisis they go through, you know, um, it leaves them with some kind of experiences which if not handled well, it might go a long way in really affecting their lives personally. Like, so the pain is usually a very bad room and some of the experiences the stigma also you know some of them get stigmatized by people and like oh you have to sell and all that and all that so it leaves some level of um, bad feelings within them which if not handled well it can as well result into trauma my name is Mark Plan Fonsi Musa and I'm a participant in this workshop and so far it has been educating, enlightening. I've experienced trauma from a different, different perspective. That's trauma healing from the Bible, Bible aspect. And it has been really exposing. It has exposed me to a lot of things like I never knew about trauma healing. Village of no and we said this is the darkest place in the grieving process. Mm -hmm. When some say, even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. You are in the shadow of, of death. You have not died, though. the reality of life, hope, have left you. You look at now and the next future, you can't see anything working. You look at now, 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 it's not working. And, and to make it more sad, it's for children of survivors of, of sickle cell. That the normal propaganda that goes around that you live, do not live beyond so so years. Mm. For you to be imagining every birthday, mm. you know what that means to you? Mm. Is that I'm getting closer to that age, mm. and then this is this is the level. But then, you know, even though you know that death, anybody can die anytime, right? Mm. But still, your heart is not always on that. Though. It's always on the time bomb that you felt you are standing on. And this is, this is your, your level of hopelessness, no matter how cheerful you are now. Whenever the thought of death or you hear that someone died, particularly someone died of sickle cell, what will come to your mind? Maybe I will be next. 
But then us living here, maybe none of us, one of us may not reach home. Like me, I may die. Maybe through accident or something. Right? It's not necessarily, people say it's not a, it's not a yardstick for. It's not a measurement that everybody, anybody can die. People have been dying with different illness. People without illness. Some people even sleep and not wake up. And they don't have sickness here. But then, when you have, particularly, your heart is always what? So this is a state of hopelessness. And when you are in this, this village, it's the darkest of the moments. So I'm here to be a, a caregiver, and it will help me know better how to handle warriors and other people going through trauma too. Yeah, at the end of the workshop, we seek to achieve um, a total healing from all the burden, so a relief from the burden the warriors and their caregivers are carrying, to make them live a better and a more complete life. Feeling they feel better, they will know that okay, yes, I, I have a chance, I can make it. I'm not the only one going through this. But the topic. Basically, it was a major reason why I wanted to join the workshop. The facilitators have been wonderful, in fact, in fact well chosen facilitators that are experienced in trauma healing. And then the way the workshop is being carried out, we do group discussions and then we get to hear stories from other people. We meet people from different students from different aspects. From what they benefit at this workshop, how they can help the society is quite simple. It's to identify people in their immediate society that are going through various things that they've gone similar things that they've gone through themselves and then they'll be able to help some people to heal. At the end of the workshop you have the capacity to also help people be a good listener, be a listening ear and also be a comforter to people, to help people heal and then realize that you are not alone. If you're ready to talk, I'm here, I'm sure that to cry and I can, I'm, I can listen to you. What we seek to achieve is, you know, making them um, have more confidence in themselves, making them being able to, to be able to um, overcome the stigma that comes with their pains and also to, you know, um, strengthen their caregivers as well and open their eyes more to ways they can actually handle them and you know how they can help them recover or cope through the pain and the episodes.